for joining the Board of Education. Uh, tonight we're going to start swearing in uh, a new member of the Board of Education, Michael Moore. Uh, so we can start that now. All right, can you uh, raise your right hand? I, Michael Moore, I, Michael Moore. do solemnly swear or affirm that I will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of New Jersey, and the Constitution of the State of New Jersey, and that I will bear true faith and I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same and allegiance to the same. And to the governments established in the United States. And to the governments established in the United States. And this state. And this state. Under the authority of the people. Under the authority of the people. So help me God. So help me God. I, Michael Moore. I, Michael Moore. Do solemnly swear or affirm. Do solemnly swear or affirm. That I will possess the quali qualifications prescribed by law. That I will possess the qualifications prescribed by law. For the office of member of a board of education. For the office of a member of board of the education, and that I will faithfully, and I will faithfully, impartially, impartially, and justly, and justly perform perform all the duties of that office. Perform all the duties of that office according to the best of my ability. According to the best of my ability. So help me God. So help me God. Good evening, everyone. My name is Dr. Perpry, and this evening we are recognizing a very special partnership with the Maximilian Foundation. I ask that those involved with this partnership please come to the stage with Dr. Brian Latwis and also our board president. Our partnership with the Maximilian Foundation started in 2018 under the supervision of Mrs. Ali Greco. It was believed from the start that their mission to help youth in a preventative manner would align with that of Barnegat's. Effective the following school year, we found great success, success with a mindfulness program called Mind Yeti. And now with available funding, we expect the same success with Dreamy Kid, a program that will be used in elementary grades beginning this fall. This program will teach our students coping skills like meditation and emotional intelligence. The combination of coping skills and emotional intelligence speaks to prevention of later life substance abuse, and it is our hope and the mission of Maximilian Foundation that students choose healthy behaviors to make good and strong decisions in their future. And when they do this, we hope to thank the Maximilian's Foundation sponsorship of Dreamy Kid. Without further ado... I ask that you help me and join me in welcoming Richard Otto Schmidt, the founding president of the Maximilian Foundation, Bud Dixon, the founding board director, Mary Cormish, board director, Sharon McKenna, Carrie Thorne, Marianne Schmidt, Michelle Cucinata, and Kevin Chevrolatte on stage to present the check in the amount of $2,080 for the purchasing of Dreamy Kid. We thank you so much for your partnership and we look forward to it for years to come.
Okay, so um, we'll into the normal committee of the whole uh, part of the agenda. Yes. Oh, yeah, sorry. Yeah, let's do a roll call, please. Roll call vote to open the meeting. Um, Ms. Bivens? Ms. Cherney? Mr. Deemer? Here. Mr. Fedorzik? Here. Mr. Hickey? Here. Mr. Moore? Here. Mr. Quelch? Mr. Zawicki? Mr. O'Brien? Here. All right. Looks like we have a quorum. And back to the show. Okay. So this week, uh, this month, Committee of the Whole, um, during the Finance B&G HST uh, Committee meeting, we discussed construction projects. Um, they are moving along. Uh, we are facing challenges with labor and material shortages, just like any other organization. Um, I, the school district has worked with the contractors to minimize any impact to school operations. And I think that you guys should start. Yeah, I'm up. Thanks, Thanks Tom. I'm up. Um, so we, we uh, the school district has worked to minimize any impacts to school operations, and I think that we should see improvements there. Um, we discussed during the committee the national problem of the TikTok challenge. Um, kids have been stealing and damaging schools. It has impacted our districts. We've had over a dozen sinks destroyed. Um, this is thousands of dollars in damage that could have funded a club or bought uniforms or done something beneficial. Uh, so please, you know, talk to talk to the kids, talk to everybody you know. Uh, to, they, they have to take pride in their school. They have to take pride in, in the community they're part of. It's super important. Grant money associated with COVID relief is being planned. We'll have more of that, about that later. Uh, we continue to pull in the schedule of re repairing and replacing the failing infrastructure, making necessary security improvements, and closing the learning loss gap without impacting residents' property taxes. So that grant money has been a tremendous help. Uh, the district's transportation coordinator has given an update on the challenges um, and the action plans. We have new GPS software, which will help uh, enable her to track and, and optimize the routes. There have been several changes to the routes and uh, we'll go into more details on that in a little bit as well. Um, the software with the GPS tracking, there will be gonna be tons of benefits going into the future. Uh, to help address some of those situations. Mr. Hickey, would you like to give an update on Education Committee? Yes, thank you very much. Um, so the Education Committee, we met at 8.30 on the 21st of September. Uh, we had a full house. Um, all members attended. We discussed... Um, First and foremost, some professional development opportunities for the administration, master teachers, and data coaches um, in the form of a enhancing feedback um, professional development event at, at the um, district. This is really geared towards helping improve how our data coaches and our master teachers um, can give feedback to our teachers, thereby um, upping their abilities to um, continue to use data in the classrooms and make adjustments to their lesson plans. Um, secondly, we had some discussion around um, continued opportunities for professional development at Ocean County College. The Ocean County College is like a subscription service almost where we will pay um, an upfront fee and then we can send um, three administrators to um, courses at, at OCC. Um, and we can pick and choose and have the flexibility to send the appropriate people to the appropriate courses to get the most uh, effective use per dollar. Um, next, we discussed uh, an instructional manual, um, the curriculum department, and uh, has been working really hard at putting this together. And what this does is this has consolidated several other manuals um, into one comprehensive how-to manual. Um, and it kind of cuts down on, on all these different source documents. And it's a single source place where teachers can go um, to talk about planning, instructing, assessing, and improving um, throughout the, um, I guess, the cycle of how they teach in the classroom. 
Um, and then lastly, um, we had some updates to the um, CBI and SLE um, list. Um, and that's attached to the minutes for anybody if they want to review it. Um, but the, the CBI is the community-based instruction. Um, and that's where um, students can go out into the community and they are basically interacting with these businesses or organizations that have signed up um, in the role of a user or a customer there. And then the SLE, which is student learning experience, is where students will be dropped off and um, or taken to the, to the location and then they will work in the organization or the business um, as an employee. So they'll, they'll get two different perspectives when um, interfacing with these organizations so that they can develop a, a way forward um, with their community engagements. Um, pending any questions from anybody on the board, um, that pretty much concludes my brief. Thank you, Mr. Hickey. Uh, the update on the Edwards Committee. Um, after many uh, attempts, we were unable to have the survey sent to the community using the Mixel service. Uh, so the district will send an update in the near future regarding the history and path forward for the Edwards School. At this point in time, it seems that demolition is the most fiscally responsible and attainable solution. Uh, we intend to keep the property and turn it into something that the community can use. Uh, but right now, we do not see a path forward for uh, remediating the Edwards School. Anybody have any questions on Edwards? They discussed about at least keeping like the cornerstone or something like that. So that way we can you know, at least keep it. Yes. In, you know, so the, the district is uh, working with the company that's across the street, the, uh, uh, the, the, I forget their name now, the company that, that gets the, the reclaims all the yeah. architectural salvage. Uh, they will be uh, pulling off that, the nameplate that's at the top that says BHS mm -hmm. and also the cornerstone. So mm -hmm. that those, you know, and, and anything else that we would like to keep and, and, uh, and more of that will probably be decided as we go along through the process of figuring out what it becomes. Mr. Prusik, an update on governance? Sure. Uh, governance, uh, let's see. We met on uh, September 22nd. Uh, main topics that were discussed. Um, there's a motion uh, tonight to approve four job descriptions. They're not new positions. They're just new designations for uh, current positions. Uh, those are the administrative assistant to director of personnel and ops, uh, supervisory of elementary ed. Uh, that was changed from K through four, from K through five, uh, uh, in, in alignment with the uh, reconfiguration. Uh, supervisor of language, arts, and literacy, if I remember correctly, uh, and social studies. That was changed um, on, on our update. It's a little bit, it's, there's an error there. It should say uh, uh, 6 through 12 from 5 through 12, or excuse me, it should be 5 through 12 from 6 through 12. Uh, and then the central office specialist. Uh, Discuss some policies uh, tonight. We have a second read for policy 1648.11. It's the road forward. Uh, that is the item. Um, that is a policy that's mandated by the state that we have to have in place for, for opening uh, due to COVID. There'll be a couple first reads. Policy 0131, the bylaws, policies, and regulations. It was up for second read last month. Uh, we tabled it so we can have further discussion. Uh, we didn't all come to an agreement on what was originally laid out for uh, from um, you know, the company that provided it to us. Uh, so that's coming up for first read. Policy 2200, curriculum content. Uh, what that does is it moves topics from policy 2422, health and physical education. Uh, it deals with some of the uh, inclusion policies uh, that were out there that were I guess you could say misplaced the health and physical education, physical education that were confusing, so we moved it back over to curriculum content. Uh, 8454 uh, management, uh, pet, if I'm saying it correctly, pediculosis uh, or head lice uh, is the common term for it. Uh, that was just updated to include pre K. The former was just uh, K through five or K through six, and now it's, uh, includes pre K. Uh, we have a first read of 14 other policies in accordance with uh, 
alert 224, and that's the alert that we get that says, hey, you should take a look at these policies. They need to be updated or at least looked at, even if they do not need to be updated. Uh, to note is policy 1648.13, and that's the school employee vaccination requirement. Uh, we had gone with you know, what was agreed to was testing once a week and that we were gonna have the state provide, if I'm saying this correctly, Dr. Lat was the state was gonna provide the vendor to do the Yes, correct. There was two options that we had to choose from. One would be that the state would provide the vendor or would pair us with a vendor that would come in. <clears throat> so we're being told that we should look at the end of this week who that vendor is. And at that point, we should have some more specifics that we could share out with the staff. Um, and option two was that we could provide it ourselves and get reimbursed. Um, but we chose to go with option one to partner with one of the uh, the vendors. So hopefully we'll go back to you by the end of this week. Um, and then as we always do, uh, Board of Education Administration, uh, BE and leadership will work together to roll out that information to the staff in such a way that we can kind of move forward with uh, the least amount of um, inconvenience to the staff that are not vaccinated as possible um, while keeping everybody safe. So with uh, discussing the district goals and the board goals, uh, you know, Mr. O'Brien wants to formalize the board goals a little bit more. Um, if you want to discuss on that a little bit, I didn't get into. Yeah, sure. I, you know, we we do go through a goal setting process each year. Um, we had a special meeting last month about closing out our goals from the previous year, and we want to make them achievable. Uh, we want to make them, you know, clear enough and and have something for the public to hold us accountable to. Uh, so we'll be looking forward to present action plans. Um, and uh, more definition around what those goals are in the near future. Uh, so for governance. Any questions for governance? I have a question. So looking at the uh, 1648.13, in paragraph three, it says that uh, contractors will be required to prove uh, vaccination, uh, but it also says that um, people that are have a short-term uh, work, contractors that do short-term work, What's the threshold for short term compared to uh, contractors that will be required? Uh, so I think that's honestly left up to be a little bit gray at this point. Um, there isn't like a hard, fast cutoff on what it is. Many of the vendors that come here, um, if they're coming into the building, are are usually like quick turnarounds. They're not they're not something that's here. The, the only capital projects that we have where a vendor would be here for multiple days are happening outside of the building, like the solar projects that we're currently doing right now or the HVAC projects. Um, but there hasn't really been a definition of what that is. And I think that's because if we say something too hard and fast, like three days, but then let's say it takes four days to fix an, an HVAC unit inside the building, we don't wanna to have to send the people away to get the to get a test. So, um, I mean, I, I guess we could define that a little bit better, but we didn't receive any guidance from the state or stress us on that. Yeah, because I'm like, I only think about, you know, the contractors that pop in for a day or two, do a little bit sure. of work, then they go do something else and they come back for a day to try to maybe skirt that, uh, that ability to, to, to have to show proof of vaccination. Sure. Um, something we can take a look at, but yeah, I can also find out if the county has any more guidance on what they're following as a best practice. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and I did not give anybody the chance to ask questions on finance, BNG, HST. Does anybody have any questions on that? I did have one, uh, sure. Mr. Brian. Go ahead. Uh, on page five of the agenda, it's uh, motion number eight for the HVAC. The upgrades in multiple school buildings. Okay. Can you just elaborate on that a little bit? Sure. Uh, so this is a, a uh, to get a proposal uh, for the work done, I think, for it's here. Correct. Yeah, yeah. the uh, professional piece, the design, and the construction work that has not been completed yet as far as, uh, as part of all the other upgrades. So okay. which, uh, which schools is this impacting? Uh, it's several schools. Uh, Brackman's probably the biggest impact because that's our kind of biggest challenge for HVAC. Um, I want to say there's a Donahue in there. I don't have the information right in front of me, but it's like three or four schools um, that specifically address the HVAC uh, challenges that we've had. Um, again, that's going to be funded through our CARES Act to increase the um, just basically the air flow and purification and climate control in the buildings. The, the question, I guess, specifically on the proposals, uh, 
is uh, page five. The site visit fees. Hmm? Somebody has to show up. A thousand dollars a day, and then if uh, somebody from Spiesel looks like there, it's almost just over two grand. Like, do we have any idea what that's about? That would be extra, um, something out, outside the scope of what we what they're describing in there. So let's say, for example, um, we run into a unexpected challenge either with the contractor or the site that would come on. Specifically, what we're doing. But if we have a bank a bankruptcy, for example, or we have to go to the bonding insurance for the uh, contractor, and we need their expertise. That's outside the scope of actual construction okay. because we ran into problems. So that's what really that is. That's over and above the normal course of business. They're here um, at least once a month and, and as needed. That, that would just be something totally an extreme situation. Okay. So the, the general purchase order that'll go out for that is just for the design fees, and construction management fees. I'm in the wrong business. <laughs> Thank you. And they're on the more reasonable side of the price. Any other questions for finance being G interested? I'd like to invite Dr. Beck up to the podium to discuss the uh, Citizens Advisory Committee. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Uh, I stopped getting feedback there. Um, at the Citizens Advisory Committee, we meet once a month to discuss different topics that would be relevant to, um, sorry, let me, I just don't want to get feedback from everybody. I don't know why that's happening. Uh, we discuss topics that um, citizens of the community, parents, teachers, educators, people from 55 and above community, we speak of uh, topics that we think are all relevant and uh, are able to direct them to the administration and the board. So we like to start each meeting by start uh, having a recap of our following meeting, quite honestly, to make sure that we're keeping, um, we're keeping administration and, and the board uh, kind of accountable. So we're not all wasting our time and, and their time. So we went back and um, discussed last month's topics a few times, which were, uh, we were talking about communication from the school district to the parents and also from the district to our, our community at, at large. Um, Mr. Nickel took the lead on the follow-up with this and everything is, is going as planned. The schools, each school district, um, each school building has linked up with their administration um, for the emails that are being sent out to the parents. So um, each school, it's not a competition between the schools, but at least they know what the other school is, how they're communicating with their parents. And if it's relevant, they, they can do the same, which is a great thing because some schools were um, a little better than other schools in that area. Um, we've reached, uh, received some approval from a few of our 55 and above communities, uh, Pheasant Run and Mirage are the two that come to mind, um, where we can place a monthly um, article in their, in their newsletter. So the 55 and above communities know what's happening in our district to get them more involved as well. Um, we had some, there's communication going on with the township to get channel 22 on Comcast, um, the, the township channel to get the district involved with that as well. That's gonna take some time, which is quite understandable. Uh, we had some recaps of the summer programs, which were a great success. Um, I'd like to commend the administration on that. My daughters were in that as well, and it was awesome. Um, and then transportation, as Mr. O'Brien was saying, there are some, uh, some things that I believe you said you were gonna speak about later on with transportation as well that we went over um, as Mrs. Vargas was there for that. Our agenda for this month um, was based upon our curriculum and diversity of education in, in our system. We really wanted to kind of dive into that. And uh, we had a great presentation by Jim Bar uh, Barbary, the Director of Curriculum and Instruction in Human Resources. He was our main presenter. He did awesome. Uh, if I butchered your last name, I'm yeah. sorry. All right, good. So Jim gave us several handouts um, to help us better understand what was uh, what the curriculum is and, and how, uh, how things are being done in the district, which was very helpful. We, one of the things we started out with, which I had no idea on this, but New Jersey is actually one of the, if not the top rated state for public schools, um, which is amazing. And we in Ocean County kind of fall in the middle of the state 
again, which is understandable funding and all that sort of stuff. Um, so, and, and Barnegat Township is doing really well within Ocean County. So um, that's something to be very proud of. The, the administration has um, a very, they seem to be very passionate about building from ground up. Now we're not leaving out the older students, but they're building up from ground up to really achieve long-term goals. Uh, and they're doing an awesome job pre-K, program, uh, it was a majority of those students have already mastered kindergarten material. That's only going to carry forward. K through two, uh, about 75% of them are above or um, on grade level or above grade level for literacy, which is fantastic. There are programs in place for our older students, middle and high school students, who if they are behind, which some of them are, that there are programs in place to catch them up as, as quickly as possibly can. This is a process. It took years and years to get behind, unfortunately. It takes some years to turn that around. Although, you know, the, the administration and district definitely wants that to happen overnight. Unfortunately, it's, it's not a reality. We spoke of different learning platforms for students of all ages, uh, using things like Wonders and Rhyme Magic, Spire, Nessie, Fast Forward. Each of these programs are used at different times with different students for phonics, for literacy, to help them go. But that's not the only platform that we're using, obviously. Um, they're, they're encouraging reading. They want to have classroom libraries for the smaller, grade, uh, the, the younger grades. Um, all high school students, I believe it was, have um, access to Ocean County Library and library cards. So there's a whole uh, litany of, of uh, ways that we can, we can help our students. Benchmark testing, RTI, all that is being used and it's being applied. If these benchmark testing um, are not being met, they're able to go into a specific classroom, a specific teacher, a specific student and say, hey, we're not performing how we need to be. This is what we need to do to change it up so we can perform better. Um, K through eight students, there are three tiers of interventions um, in class with teacher support and staff, adaptive learning, computer programs, traditional basic skills where that student may need to be taken aside um, once or twice a week to work one on one or in small groups. Um, we have tremendous resources for all of our students and, and they're being utilized. Um, we spoke about career and technical education programs, how we offer the SHIELD program for those who are interested in law and law enforcement, how we have a, a collaborative um, effort with Ocean County Votech School, where there's a lot of different things. We have work study programs where students can go out to local businesses and work for a little bit. Um, we have our, our district participates in communities that care program. They're working on a spring job fair for our students. So there's, there's a lot going on to promote not only the college track students, but other students um, for all to set everybody up to be successful. We spoke briefly of uh, just basic diversity and inclusion within the district. And uh, we were provided uh, our handouts on the policies um, that the district abides by with all this. And, and quite simply, no matter who you are, you deserve to learn. You are going to learn. You're gonna be included in everything. There's no difference. Let's get back to it. Let's go to class. That's that. Um, and that was, uh, you know, obviously we went into further depth with a lot of stuff, but that, that is, uh, that's a quick overview. Our next community um, action committee is going, or account, uh, we're going to be meeting on October 18th. Our main topic of discussion is going to be code of conduct, understanding the disciplinary actions um, that the district uses, you know, and safety of both of our students and our staff. Anybody have any questions? Anybody out there? Bless you. I'm out. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to have a motion to adjourn committee of the whole. So moved. Convene into regular board meeting. So moved. Second. Okay. Um, Mr. Deemer? Yes. Mr. Vidorzik? Yes. Mr. Hickey? Yes. Mr. Moore? Yes. Mr. O'Brien? Yes. All right. We have convened, or I'm sorry, adjourned the community of the whole. And we'll jump into. Uh, yeah, we're, we're going. I'd like to call the meeting to order the uh, regular board, meet, board of education meeting for September 28th, 2021. The notice of this meeting has been forwarded to the Asbury Park Press, the Beacon, tap into Barnegat and placed in the foyer of 
each Barnegat Township school in the Barnegat Township Municipal Building. It's been filed with the Barnegat Township Municipal Clerk in conjunction with the Open Public Meetings Act. Uh, roll call, we'll do uh, Ms. Bivens, Ms. Cherney, Mr. Dina, Here. Mr. Fedorczyk? Here. Mr. Hickey? Here. Mr. Moore? Here. Mr. Quelch? Mr. Zawicki? Mr. O'Brien? Here. All right, we have a quorum. Uh, please stand for the flag salute. Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I please have a motion for approval of the agenda. So moved. Second. Dina? Yes. Mr. Fedorczyk? Yes. Mr. Hickey? Yes. Mr. Moore? Yes. Mr. O'Brien? Yes. Motion carries. Okay. And please have a motion for approval of minutes from the regular session of August 24th, the executive session one from August 24th, executive session two from August 24th, and regular session from special meeting at August 30th. So moved. Second. Mr. Deemer. Yes. Mr. Fedorczyk? Yes. Mr. Hickey? Yes. Mr. Moore? Um, stating because I was not present. Okay. Mr. O'Brien? Yes. All right. Motion carries. Um, is the student representative coming to me? So um, I'd like to move into uh, Renegade Education Association liaison, Ms. Sumeo. Yes, can you hear me? Yep. Okay. Thank you, Mr. O'Brien, Board of Education, Dr. Latwis. We would like to thank you for supporting the teachers with providing professional development for the new math series and the ELA program, Fast Forward. These supports allow the teachers to feel more confident in implementing these programs to their classrooms and in turn benefit the students. We'd also like to thank the ROBMS, the CSCS, and the VHS staff for jumping in quickly to help disperse Afghan people that were brought to the joint base right here in New Jersey. Our community continues to help support initiatives to help the many in need. Also, we want to thank Mr. Mike Hickey for allowing us to pair with him to make this happen. Please be sure to attend tomorrow's night's Meet the Candidate Night, co-sponsored by the BEA at 6.30 right here at Barnegat Auditorium. Sorry. We have 11 candidates running this year for three seats. These positions are very important as those elected help pave the way and shape decisions made for our students. Hope to see as many of you there as possible. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Mayo. Dr. Lewis or Superintendent Silas? Good evening, everyone. Like Dr. Latwis said, we are going to be doing the first upstanders of the 21-22 school year, and I am so excited to announce them. So Barnegat is a place where we believe in a positive school climate, family togetherness, and community involvement. And it's the marriage of these three principles that defines the upstander program. Like last year, this year to unite Barnegat as a district, we're recognizing students aligned with the Bengal Pride acronym. So this month, our students exemplified benevolence for the letter B. To reward these students, we are granting them with a gift card for a family meal from a local Here. restaurant. And tonight's gift certificates are for Dolce's to reinforce the idea of a family meal and family togetherness. I'm honored tonight to recognize six upstanding individuals for their commitment to making Barnegat a better place. So when you hear your name, students, please join Board President Mr. Sean O'Brien and Superintendent Dr. Brian Latwis in celebrating you by coming to receive your plaque and gift certificate. In absentia, we are recognizing junior at BHS, Henry Zuniga. Henry demonstrated the character of service and of true upstander qualities on the first day of school. He sprang into action to direct and assist vocational students and the front office staff found him to be a huge help and a true leader. 
We're thankful for Henry and we're also thankful for our eighth grader at Brackman, Winter Delaney. Winter has shown the trait of benevolence through her desire to do good to others. She always treats her peers and teachers with kindness and respect, and she has recently befriended a new student to sit with her during lunch so that that student does not sit alone. She's an excellent example of what we look for in a role model. Congratulations, Winter. And now we'll recognize sixth grader at Horbelt, Andrew Rosa. Andy is a very kind and compassionate student. He's involved in many of our clubs at the Horbelt School, and he's always willing to help out with school activities. He demonstrated benevolence by volunteering his time over the summer, helping out with our student activities car wash and giving tours at fifth grade orientation. We know he's going to have a great sixth grade year. He already is starting to. Congratulations, Andy. Next, we're recognizing fourth grader at Donahue, Colton Spear. Colton is very kind and has the best manners. He holds the door open for others and is always willing to help his teachers or peers. Colton also shows compassion and empathy to his classmates. He includes everyone and checks on them if needed. Recently during class, Another student told Colton that if he doesn't, that he doesn't have a lot of friends. So without hesitation, Colton simply said, I will be your friend. We are so very proud of him and he makes our school a better place to be. And now we'll recognize our kindergarten student at Collins, Penelope Kozal. Congratulations, Penelope. You've displayed several acts of compassion, care, and helpfulness since the first day of school. Hey, sweetie. She is very giving to others with her extremely kind personality. She goes out of her way to make sure that her friends are okay and makes them feel better when they have been hurt on the playground or they're missing a loved one. She's a shining example of what it means to show goodwill towards others and to help those in need. Congratulations, Penelope. And last, we recognize our pre-K student from Dumfrey, Callie Bowles. She is kind to all of her classmates. When a classmate is upset or injured, Callie goes and consoles them. She puts her arm around them or rubs their back. She is always willing to let a classmate join the group or hold hands with a classmate who might need a partner. She is a true upstander. <laughs> Congratulations to Callie and all the upstanders and we'll see you next month. Next, can we call Michelle Cucinata up to the microphone so we can honor the adopted street? Hi, everybody. I just have a few students that would like to make an announcement about our Born Again Adopted Street. Um, we are having a cleanup coming up, so they're going to come up and speak about that. Come on, girls.
Hello? Okay. <laughs> Good evening. I'm Nora Hansen. I'm one of the founders of the Adopt Street program. I'm also a junior from Barnegat High School, as well as the president of the 4 H Ocean County Ecology Club. Hi, I'm Jenna Marcy, and I'm also one of the founders of Adopt the Street program. I'm also a junior at Barnegat High School, and I'm one of the section leaders for the high school's marching band. Hello, I'm Skylar Dasty. Uh, as the program expanded, Jenna and Nora brought me in as another co-founder. I'm also a junior at Barnegat High School, and I am the historian of the 4-H Ocean County Ecology Club. We started this program in 2019. Usually the town would have a cleanup for Earth Day, but that year it didn't go through. Jenna and I decided to do an independent cleanup, and with seeing the amount of trash in our community, we decided to make our own program to help. We came up with the rules and a sign-up sheet and took our idea to Ms. Cucinata. Through Ms. Cucinata's help, we were able to establish meetings with the, the then mayor, Mr. Cerulli, to bring the program to a town-wide level. Through their support, we were able to launch the program with a ribbon cutting ceremony in the fall of 2019. Since the program has been established, we've held numerous cleanups throughout each year. Currently, we have over 50 streets adopted with around 200 participants. This includes various businesses, baseball teams, Boy and Girl Scouts, and youth groups. Not to mention this program is ever expanding and growing. Our next cleanup is on October 9th. We'll be meeting at the Dumphy School at 1030. We encourage everybody to come and support the program and community. We have both the flyers and applications for anyone who wants to join online, not here. <laughs> Upon arrival at the cleanup, uh, we will supply gloves and bag bags courtesy of the township. If you do not have a street already, you can sign up or you can adopt one or you can sign up and adopt one or you can we can assign one to you that day. When adopting a street, you are required to clean it three times a year. However, with the group cleanups, the requirements are easy to fulfill. We would like to take this opportunity to thank Ms. Kuchinata, the Board of Education, mm -hmm. the Barnegat Township Police Department, the residents and businesses who helped keep the program going, and would like to give a special thank you to the Barnegat Township Public Works who graciously hang up the adopt -the street signs you may have seen around town. Thank you all again for your time. Does anybody have any questions? I'd like to invite Dr. Perfra back up to the microphone to present the district head report. Thank you, Dr. Latwis. Per the New Jersey Department of Education, annually we must review the HIP grade report. The HIP grade report is produced by the anti bullying specialist in partnership with me. In one of my roles here is the anti bullying coordinator in partnership with Dr. Latwis. So tonight we will be reviewing on the next slide the published grade report for the 2019 2020 school year. In this grade report, what is evaluated is the personnel and procedure through what that we follow in order to be compliant in our HIP investigations, trainings that are provided to all staff and our anti-bullying specialists, and our HIP programs and culture and climate initiatives and related instruction. Um, you can see on this slide the, um, the scores that have recently been published, and this is regarding the 2019-2020 school year. So now I'm going, and you can see for each particular building, the sum score, and the total score is out of a possible 78 points. 
We have continued last year our utilization of MyK12. MyK12 is a platform and a portal through which we utilize to ensure that we can monitor remotely our compliance for HIB investigations. It's reviewed, the HIB, the MyK12 report for HIBs is reviewed in executive session as needed on a monthly basis by our Board of Education. It's also reviewed annually in this particular presentation. And it aids in our timeline and, like I mentioned before, compliance tracking. We have an exhaustive harassment, intimidation, and bullying standard operating procedure manual. It's about 15 pages, and it merges our MyK12 digital tracking with our paper and pencil investigation that we utilize when our students, whether they're witnesses, targets, or the accused, complete their statements. And all of this is monitored by our anti-bullying specialists. So this past year, we had our typical trainings where I personally trained the anti-bullying specialists and where the anti-bullying specialists turnkey that for each of the particular buildings. This is also done to new staff. In addition to that, we, have remedi we had training this particular past year regarding remedial measures specific to mentoring. We conducted, a through our community partnership with Communities That Care, we conducted universal mentoring training and that was a significant success. We had many additional support programs that were new in the 2020-2021 school year, like in Barnegat High School, where we had DART, which is a club that increases social and emotional intelligence, as well as decreases negative behaviors. And they have started a partnership with Donahue, where they link older students to younger students to help those younger students see what a positive role model looks like. And last year, Brackman had a cultural awareness group to increase inclusivity, and Horbelt had building-wide second-step implementation, which is an evidence-based program that increases mindfulness activities and increases positive coping skills. Donahue piloted an awesome partnership this past year for no place for no called No Place for Hate, and No Place for Hate is through the Anti-Defamation League, and that was a new partnership for us. And in addition to that, Collins had an expansive holiday programming partnership where they actually partnered with the high school and some students at the high school provided food for needy families at Collins, in addition to having a very strong week of respect. And Donahue had an awesome program that launched last year called the Connection Cafe, where they had psychoeducation available to parents, teaching them how to be stronger parents, engage in healthy conflict resolution, and decrease negative behaviors for their toddlers at home. And all of these are examples of ways that we can facilitate positive school climate and also positive townwide climate and healthy home environments specific to Dumphy's efforts as well. And of course, we continued last year, just like we're continuing this year, the Upstanders program. And through this program, one student is recognized per school. And the spirit of the program is to have that positive recognition for the students to increase positive school climates and also increase family togetherness and community involvement. And we're so happy to continue that this year. So thinking forward for this upcoming year in the 21-22 school year, we're going to begin a more rigorous version of data tracking for our mentor and mentee meetings. And we're also going to make sure that the mentor-mentee ratio is consistent in all of the buildings. We will make sure that multiple buildings are no places for hate, not just Donahue, like last year. And we're going to increase our social and emotional infusion. Two specific examples of how we may do that is through broader second step implementation and Dreamy Kid, which is sponsored by Maximilian, as was previously mentioned. So I hope you all enjoyed this presentation and I hope that everyone has a wonderful year. Thank you for your time. Thank you. A um, couple uh, real quick updates uh, before I pass it back over. Uh, one, I'd just like to uh, give a shout out to the uh, administration uh, for the successful implementation of the virtual back to school nights. That was obviously something we had to pivot a couple uh, weeks ago with the rising number of COVID cases. Uh, we felt it was prudent not to have um, that many parents cycling through uh, in one location uh, with our staff. Uh, there. So I appreciate everybody's patience with that and cooperation. And uh, again, uh, kudos to the admin for being able to kind of flip the script so fast to be able to implement that as successfully as it was. Uh, 
Two updates I wanted to touch upon. The marching band and the colored guard took first place with a score of 76.66 at the Tournament of the Bands Region 7 preview show at Brick Township. So big shout out to them. Congratulations. Uh, girls Volleyball this weekend entered and won the Morristown Invitational Tournament. Um, and senior Patricia Moreno was named the most outstanding player. So kudos to them. And last but not least, I just, I know we honored them uh, earlier, but I wanted to circle back and just thank uh, the Maximilian Foundation again. Um, they partnered with us about three years ago and have donated thousands of dollars to the district to be able to put forth the social and emotional programs that we have. And that was done prior to COVID. And, you know, who could have anticipated that need for that social and emotional support as greatly as it's needed right now? So, uh, we can't thank that foundation enough for their partnership with us and for the uh, generosity they've demonstrated to the district over the last three years. So um, thank you to them. Uh, with that being said, I will kick it back over to you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Lovelace. Um, I would also like to thank the Maximilian Foundation. We truly do appreciate what they do for the community and giving back to the schools is fantastic. And that's why we're all here. So thank you. Um, I'd like to talk about a few different subjects tonight. Uh, as part of my remarks. The first one being the Edwards School. Uh, as discussed, we won't be able to send the survey out using the Township's Nixle service. Uh, but after many years of neglect, we've been left with the responsibility of deciding what to do with the Edwards School. Um, you know, I played basketball there. I participated in community events in that school. I would love to see it restored and brought back to its original glory. It could be a centerpiece for our town, but instead it's a safety hazard. And I can't allow it to keep being pushed down the road into the future. Um, so we will find a way for this property to offer something to our community, um, not the empty building it is now. So we will make it a community center and, and make it great for our township and our schools again. Um, but I don't think we have a whole lot of choice and other than it's going to have to be torn down. Uh, for transportation, we still are facing some significant staffing issues with the buses. We need substitute aides. So if anybody knows anybody that would like to be a substitute aide on the bus, Please have them go through the district website to apply. Uh, the transportation coordinator is managing all the routes and making changes and continuous improvements. There was 150 changes in the first 15 days of school. So you can imagine the scope of uh, what's happening. And I know that um, she's really working hard to, to get her hands around it and solve all the problems. So we do here in the community, we understand the challenges uh, and the district is working diligently to solve those problems. Uh, we have a new GPS system, which is online, uh, and that will help continue to lead to further improvements because we'll have real-time tracking of the buses uh, and then some hopeful, hopefully some future communications come out of that. I'd also like to discuss the grant usage that we've uh, been able to take part in over the past year. Um, COVID has uh, done a lot of things in, uh, in order to sort of remediate some of the challenges the districts has faced. Uh, the government has handed out grant money. Um, they're called ESSERD funds. The first fund was largely for PPE, tents, dividers, health and safety equipment, really purely COVID mitigation. Um, the second one, we were able to make technology investments and improvements, over $500,000. $400,000 nearly in curriculum aids and improvements. We replaced gym equipment, which was as old as the schools. It was unsafe and beyond its useful life. It needed to be upgraded, and we were able to do that with grant money. We made critical safety and security upgrades. We upgraded our libraries and classrooms with much needed furniture. And for SR3, the budgets are still being developed, but we expect to catch up on some of the infrastructure needs that we've been left with, trying to make our buildings uh, be what our students need them to be. And so many of our facility and assets have not had the proper investments to keep them running efficiently. Um, I'm thankful for these grants to allow us to try and catch up on them. Uh, and, and, you know, without an impact to the taxpayer through property taxes, these grants have been a substantial help to us. So that was all I had for the president's remarks. And I please have a motion to enter public session. Second. Okay. Uh, Mr. Deemer. Yes. Mr. Fedorzik. Yes. Mr. Hickey. Yes. Mr. Moore. Yes. Mr. Quelch. Yes. Mr. O'Brien. Yes. All right. We're in public session at 637. Okay. Sir, anybody in the audience that would like to speak?
Is there anybody on the Zoom that would like to speak? Okay, I have a motion to close public session, please. So moved. So moved. Second. Mr. Deemer. Yes. Mr. Fedorzik. Yes. Mr. Hickey. Yes. Mr. Moore. Yes. Mr. Quelch. Yes. Mr. O'Brien. Yes. All right. When public session is closed, it's 6 okay. 30. <clears throat> Can I please have a motion for item number 13, finance BNG HST committee motions, one through 10? So moved. Second. Any discussion? Mr. Deemer. Yes. Mr. Fedorzik. Yes. Mr. Hickey. Yes. Mr. Moore. Yes. Mr. Quelch. Yes. Mr. O'Brien. Yes. All right. Motions carry. Okay. Can I please have a uh, motion for uh, agenda item 14, athletics committee one and two? So moved. Second. Okay. Any discussion? All right. Mr. Deemer. Yes. Mr. Fedorzik. Yes. Mr. Hickey? Yes. Mr. Moore? Yes. Mr. Quelch? Yes. Mr. O'Brien? Yes. Motions carry. Okay. Uh, please have a motion for agenda item 15, education committee, one through eight. So moved. Second. Okay. Uh, any discussion? I should say further discussion. Uh, Mr. Deemer? Yes. Mr. Fedorzik? Yes. Mr. Hickey? Yes. Mr. Moore? Yes. Mr. Quelch? Yes. Mr. O'Brien? Yes. Motions carried. Uh, item number 16 is for information purposes only for the district workshops. Item number 17, governance committee motions one through three. Can please have a motion? Second. Okay. Any further discussion? Hey, what numbers did you call that? One through what? Uh, for governance one through seven. Okay, right here. Yeah, you said one through three. No, I'm sorry, no. yeah, one through seven. Okay, Can I go through again or no? I think we're good. So moved. Clarification. Second. Uh, Mr. Deemer. Yes. Mr. Fedorzik? Yes. Mr. Hickey? Yes. Mr. Moore? Yes. Mr. Quelch? Yes. Mr. O'Brien? Yes. Right. Motion's carried. Okay, agenda item 18, personal committee motions, items 1 through 37. Please have a motion. Second. Second. Any further discussion? All right. Mr. Deemer? Yes. Mr. Fedorzik? Yes. Mr. Hickey? Yes. Mr. Moore? Yes. Mr. Quelch? Yes. Mr. O'Brien? Yes. All right, motions carry. <clears throat> Let's have a motion to move on to the executive session. So moved. Second. Okay. Mr. Deemer. Yes. Mr. Fedorzik. Yes. Mr. Hickey. Yes. Mr. Moore. Yes. Mr. Quelch. Yes. Mr. O'Brien. Yes. All right. We're in uh, executive at six forty-one. Hey, do you guys want to send me a link for Zoom, or uh, do you want me to call in? We'll send you a Google link.
Test, test. How's it sound? Can you hear me now? Sounds good, thanks. Second. 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 Yes. Mr. Second. 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 Yes. Mr. Second. 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 And then let I uh, just figure Mark to be the last one. Okay. okay. So uh, can I please have a motion for the settlement agreement with DM and KM as date so 9 mm -hmm. We're doing these top two together or uh no them set. Well, okay. there's there's three all together. So we'll do that one second okay. and then Mark. So all all right. All right. Now, Mr. Deemer. Yes. Mr. Fedorzik? Yes. Mr. Hickey? Yes. Mr. Moore? Yes. Mr. Quelch? Yes. Mr. O'Brien? Yes. All right, motion carries. And can I please have a motion to settle, uh, motion to accept the letter of resignation from employee 5531, effective 123121. So moved. Second. Okay. Um, Mr. Deemer? Yes. Mr. Fedorzik? Yes. Mr. Hickey? Yes. Mr. Moore? Yes. Mr. Quelch? Yes. And Mr. O'Brien? Yes. Uh, the last one would be a motion to accept separation agreement with employee number 5531 as presented to the board. Board authorizes board attorney to make inconsequential changes to agreement with support of the superintendent. Any significant changes to be presented to the board for approval, if necessary, at a later Board of Education meeting. So moved. Second. All right. Any further discussion? All right. Uh, Mr. Deemer? Yes. Mr. Fedorzik? Yes. Mr. Hickey? Yes. Mr. Moore? Yes. Mr. Quelch? Yes. And Mr. O'Brien? Yes. All right. Motion carries. Okay. Motion to adjourn. So moved. All right. Second. Second. Mm. Uh, Mr. Deemer? Yes. Mr. Fedorzik? Yes. Mr. Hickey? Yes. Mr. Moore? Yes. Mr. Quelch? Yes. Mr. O'Brien? Yes. All right. We're adjourned at 84. Thank you. <clears throat> See you. See you. Hey, Mike, I like the, uh, the, dog, the doggy picture.